Imagine a David and Goliath story, except this one takes place in the skies of the Middle East, specifically over Iran. David, who's been Iran for decades, is now trying to become Goliath. But will they be able to do that as they build their new indigenous fighter? We're gonna dive into all that and more in this video. And on a personal note, I'm gonna tell you a story about a time of intercepting jets on the Iran-Afghanistan border. What a wild ride. Here we go. The birth of the Hesse Kawasar, Iran's indigenous fighter jet or trainer fighter jet is actually a modern marvel for Iran because of the amount of embargoes and sanctions that have been applied to Iran, actually creating their own indigenous fighter jet is actually a feat that is relatively surprising. So as we dive into this fighter jet, we're gonna get into some of the specifics and really how they were able to do this despite all the different sanctions that were trying to keep them from doing this. With a design reminiscent of renowned Northrop jets and a suite of impressive features, the Kalsar is more than a fighter jet. It's essentially a bold statement. As it soars through the skies, one can't help but wonder, is this the beginning of a new era in Middle Eastern aerial warfare? is Iran on the cusp of redefining the balance of air power in the region. When we venture into the world of modern military marvels, the Hesse Kawazar is one of those because of the fact that it was actually produced in Iran. Why was this produced? Well, there's rumors recently of Iran actually getting Su-35s, an advanced Russian fighter jet, a full up F-15E or F-15EX type comparison, but the Russian variant built by Sukhoi. So is the Hesse Kawasar essentially just a trainer jet that's gonna allow Iran to be prepared for this arrival of this modern marvel? Or are they going to be making their own production fighter jet to compete with the F-15 or F-15E? And are they actually able to do that in a sustainable way where they can create parts and keep an assembly line and keep these jets maintained? Or are they going to stop at the trainer level, see that as an advancement that they can be proud of, and then just start buying fighter jets from other nations? But this isn't just Iran's attempt to play in the big leagues. It's a statement that they can actually create modern fighter jets that can go supersonic, carry armament, and have a range over a thousand nautical miles. The Hesse Kausar is a fighter jet with DNA echoing the Northrop F5, and it emerges as a symbol of Iran's ingenuity in the face of adversity. It's as if Iran, under the glaring spotlight of international sanctions and an arms embargo led by the U.S., decided to roll up its sleeves and craft its path in aerial warfare. It's essentially like the rebellious teenager is like, no, dad, I'm taking the keys to the Corvette. <laughs> While tales of Iran's military might and nuclear ambitions have long been the stuff of global headlines and hushed whispers in diplomatic corridors, the Kalsar paints a picture of a nation defiantly flexing its technological muscles. So buckle up as we embark on this high octane journey to unravel the enigma of the Hesse Kalsar. We'll explore what makes it a formidable contender in the skies, or if it even is, and how it could change the dynamics of air combat in the Middle East. As for the notion that Iran might be an underdog dog in this high stakes game, well, the Kausar might just be the ace up Iran's sleeve that then unravels to create a modern fighter jet that Iran can use to compete with fourth generation fighters like the F-16 and F-15, which are very prevalent in the Middle Eastern region. The Hesse Kausar is Iran's ambitious foray into the fighter jet arena, and this is their attempt to show the resilience of their nation and show that they are a contender that will challenge air superiority from other their nations. Becoming a key player in Iran's defense sector, the Hesse Kausar's evolution mirrors Iran's strategic shift in aerospace technology. The Kausar's origins date back to 2009 amidst escalating international sanctions, marking the beginning of Iran's journey towards self sufficiency in military aviation. A significant milestone was reached in 2017 when Iran unveiled a prototype of the Hesse at a Moscow air show. This was their statement that, hey, world, we, Iran, are entering the sphere of aviation and aerospace manufacturing. And in 2018, the progress continued as Iran unveiled an entire assembly line for the Hesse. Along with that assembly line came the announcement that Iran was going to export the Hesse to other nations like China, Russia, and anyone who would essentially place an order for this. So they're saying that their defense industry is creating a jet that is worthy of being purchased by other nations. So if you really read between the lines, they're trying to show the resilience of this aircraft and the resilience of their manufacturing aerospace arm. 
By the end of 2023, Iran had successfully created four of the Hesa Kausars and had actually started flying them and testing them with their own indigenous and potentially Russian test pilots. One of the main goals of the Hesa Kausar program was to increase the readiness of Iran's air force. So they see the F-5 type variant, the Hesa, as a way to train pilots in supersonic fighter jet aviation, which is way different from any other aircraft that they could train in. So personally having trained in the T-30 and learn the flight characteristics of a supersonic fighter with really small wings and the unforgiving spaces that you can be put in when you get slow and low in that aircraft. It essentially teaches you to be a very resilient and diligent pilot. And Iran wants this so that they lose less of the potentially advanced fighters that they are going to get from Russia. Today's video sponsor is Private Internet Access. They're a VPN company, and if you can't tell already, I love acronyms. They're a company that protects your browsing data, and ads like this help me do this full time. So thank you in advance for checking them out so I can provide these videos to you for free. Private Internet Access protects every bit of your browsing data. And if you don't have a VPN, it's essentially like a text message thread where everybody can just see what you're up to. Instead, with a VPN, it protects what you're doing, protects your personal information, and today this has never been more important. But one of the coolest things is that it can actually help you access more content with Amazon Prime, Netflix, Disney Plus, and the other major streaming services because these streaming services actually limit some of the content that you can get in certain geographic locations. So you can change your IP address to any of the 50 states and one of 91 countries, and this helps you access even more content from these streaming services, which is just awesome. One of the coolest things though is with one subscription, you can protect every single device in your house. And if you click the link in the description now, you'll get a 30 day free trial plus a special discount just for Max Afterburner subscribers and viewers. But you should be a subscriber. The Kalsar's aerodynamic frame is a modern reinterpretation of the F5. Known for its agility and efficiency in combat scenarios, the F5 design is characterized by minimized drag and enhanced maneuverability. It sets a benchmark in jet design and it's influenced multiple generations generations of fighter aircraft. Despite the cessation of F-5 production in 1987 in the United States, its legacy endures with hundreds still operational worldwide, underlining the design's adaptability and longevity. And Iran's history with the F-5 dates back to the 1960s when they acquired multiple units from the United States. And this contingent of F-5s formed a significant part of the Iranian Air Force pre-revolution around 1979. Post-revolution, Iran faced challenges in maintaining its F-5 fleet due to strained relations with the United States. This led to innovative approaches in sourcing parts and maintenance, a testament to the country's resilience and ingenuity in the face of international sanctions. So the aerodynamic build of the Hesa Kausar echoes pretty much every aspect of the F-5. It's a sharp looking aircraft. It features low mounted wings along an elongated fuselage, seamlessly transitioning into an inverted Y tail assembly. The design minimizes air resistance, enhancing maneuverability. And on a personal note, having flown the T-38, which I would call a cousin of the F-5, the maneuverability is really good, especially when you have a lot of airspeed and you're operating at medium altitudes. If you get up really high or you're down really low, sometimes the operational capability would be limited of the F-5 or the T-38. But it is a great mid-altitude fighter and has maneuverability at those altitudes that could come compete with any modern day fighter jet. The Hesa Kalsar has a dual cockpit configuration, and I want you to think of this for a second. It's a tandem cockpit, which puts a pilot in front and a pilot in back, which is a perfect situation for training. So if Iran is to bring in Russian pilots to train them prior to getting the Su-35, this would be the perfect setup since the pilot in the back would be the instructor and could essentially watch over what the pilot in the front is doing and finally tune their skills so that they're ready to operate Ferraris of the sky, like fourth generation fighters that Russia might be selling to Iran. Let's talk about the advanced armament and capabilities that this F-5 variant, the Hesa, might have. It can carry air-to-air -air and air-to-ground weaponry, including carrying a 2,000 pound air-to-ground munition, as well as 
four variants of the AIM-9 that Iran is building indigenously. These are called the Air Fatir missiles and they derive their design from the Sidewinder. It also has an integrated cannon with 20 millimeter bullets, which is a standard size for pretty much every fourth generation fighter. Most likely the F5 is going to carry somewhere between 300 to 500 rounds of 20 millimeter and that's going to give the pilot about three to five seconds of actual trigger time and you've got to be very careful knowing where your bullets are going and maximizing every single shot you take with that limited amount of 20 millimeter cannon. I want to highlight what the radar is possibly in this F5 variant. The Kalsar's avionics suite includes the Griffo radar system, boasting a range of somewhere around 57 miles or 93 kilometers. It gives the pilot the ability to track dual targets simultaneously, which is a key feature in modern air combat scenarios. The KSAR is going to boast twin turbofan engines, and those are J90 turbofans. They each offer thrust that can push the KSAR up to speeds of somewhere around 930 miles per hour, which is about 1500 kilometers per hour. The operational range of the KSAR is going to be somewhere between 1200 to 1400 nautical miles. The altitude is going to mimic fourth generation fighters as well, with a maximum altitude being somewhere around 49,000 feet, maybe eking this thing a little bit higher if you get a ton of airspeed and then climb up like essentially you're on the uphill part of a roller coaster. So after diving into the nitty gritty of the Hesa Kalsar, it's clear to me that this could actually be a formidable fighter jet going up against fourth generation fighters. The F5, the classic design of that F5 essentially makes it the Swiss army knife of the sky where you can use it as a trainer. You can use it as a light attack or combat aircraft and it could actually be a formidable air to air enemy in a close in situation where you're using heat seeking missiles and the cannon. But when it comes to that type of a close in situation with an F5, you're really gonna have to have finely tuned skills in that F5 and you're going to have to have flown it a lot and put in the reps to get good at it. So is that a likely scenario for the Iranian pilots? Potentially, if they're able to get over 200, 300, maybe 400 hours a year inside this thing, but most likely with the limited ability and the limited amount of airframes, that amount of hours is going to be out of reach for Iran at the moment of this video being made. But that doesn't mean that this is a nothing burger, as we like to say. This is a big deal. And this is a statement of Iran that they have the ability and the capability to manufacture and design in the aerospace sector, showing that they want to be a formidable competitor to challenge air superiority from other nations. And specifically, they want to create regional dominance in the Middle East by using their own indigenous trainer, this HESA, combining that with the Russian expertise of building more advanced fighters like the Sukhoi Su-30 and Su-35. And the fascinating part, Iran is not just keeping this aeronautical gym to itself, but it's also wheeling and dealing with other nations and it wants to export its sky-high ambitions. So by design, this whole program from Iran is hush-hush. But what is the Hesa Kalsar most likely? Most likely it's what they see as their classroom in the sky for their future Top Gun pilots that they want to pilot advanced fighter jets. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please watch another one. That would be the biggest compliment you can give me. I'll see you on one of these videos that pops up over here. Head to maxafterburner.co if you wanna grab some threads. We'll see you on one of these videos. Have a great day.